Health enhancement is all about the communication and enhancement of harmony between the mind and the body. And even using the word between the mind and the body seems to distinguish themselves as separate things, the mind on one hand, the body on the other. But all the research is showing it's very, very difficult to discern where the mind begins and ends and where the body begins and ends. Every thought we have, every feeling, every emotion, every physical activity that we take sends information to every cell, every organ, every aspect of our being on a mental, emotional, physical, spiritual level. And so separating this mind-body connection into a specific area of discussion is in some sense a misnomer. It's all about harmony. How do we access harmony in our lives between the different aspects of our being? The mind is directly influenced by our physical exercise and activity, our smiles, our frowns, our actions, our lack of action. The body can be directly influenced by the mind. Late at night, we're in a house. We hear a strange sound that we've never heard before. Our mind begins to race. Oh my God, somebody's breaking into the house. They're trying to get in. Not only does the mind race, but then the heart races. It's scared, fear, doubt. Am I safe? Am I secure? What happened to the person down the street from me a week ago? And before we know it, our hands are trembling. It all started with a sound that we just couldn't identify. And we've invented a whole story that's triggered the physiology of our body into an anxiety state. When we go to discover what that sound was, it turns out it was the breeze blowing a branch of a tree, rubbing up against the siding of the house and producing a very harmless sound. And all of a sudden, the heart returns back to normal, the hands stop trembling, and the movie of the mind ceases, and we find ourselves at peace again. What changed? What changed was we interpreted a sound to be a threat as opposed to knowing that it was a branch of a tree. But the physiology of the body took that perceived threat as a serious challenge to its future viability, its survival. We do this every day, fight or flight, relaxation response, challenges in our day-to-day -day life are transmitted from the physical level to the mental level or to the mental emotional level to the physical level. So how do we get out of this bind? How do we promote harmony as part of our daily life? Well, there's actually a whole field of science devoted to mind-body medicine, or in scientific terms, it's known as psychoneuroimmunology, PNI. The founder of this field, if you can name one person as a founder of any field, Dr. George Solomon did a lot of research on what makes people immunologically more vital than people who succumb to such things as AIDS or chronic disease challenges with a low immune function. So he took groups of people with serious immune challenges, diseases, and he tried to ask through doing personal histories and observing their life, why some people, despite these immune challenges, thrived and other people succumbed to these challenges. And what he found out was quite amazing, that the people who thrived in this mind-body harmony, number one, were people who were in touch with their needs, both on an emotional level as well as on a physical level. Number two, that these people were able to take assertive action to do something to meet these needs. They were confident individuals who had a can-do attitude towards life and they didn't feel a victim to their immune challenges. The third thing Dr. Solomon found in his research on mind-body harmony with respect to immune function was that these people had a raison d'etre. They had a passion for living. They, they, they got up in the morning and they had something that they really felt they needed to do, wanted to do, and were going to do regardless of their immune challenge. And this motivated the cells of their body to go beyond the obstacles that were placed in front of them to actually overcome the immune function. Another thing that Dr. Solomon found with immunologically healthy individuals, this mind-body integration in a state of harmony, was that these people had a sense of curiosity and wonderment of the world, that childlike sense of, yes, I've got a disease process happening, I've got a challenge with my immune function, but how might I be able to get around this? So for them, it wasn't like they were a victim of life, but they were on an adventure, 
as to how to take this obstacle and transcend it as if they were trekking in the Himalayas or, or going off into a, a land that they've never been before. They had a capacity as well, Dr. Solomon found, for pleasure and play. Despite the fact that they were supposedly unwell, laughter, playfulness, and most importantly, forgiveness were all a part of their lives. So when you think of mind-body harmony, psychoneuroimmunology, the fact that our minds are affecting our bodies, our physical activity is affecting our minds, remember these qualities that Dr. Solomon found in this extreme cases of people with serious immune function challenges and what helped people survive in that and apply them to your daily life amidst perhaps minor challenges that you might be facing in the health area. Remember that playfulness, that laughter, the forgiveness, the releasing of animosities, resentments, frustration, anger, and hostility, and replacing it with pronoia, that conspiracy of joy. The whole world is taking me even through health challenges to an opportunity to tap into reserves within myself, in my mind, in my body, to escort me on a spiritual adventure that will take me to higher heights regardless of what people around me might be telling me could be the outcomes of these health challenges. One of the key things in this journey of mind-body harmony is the people that we surround ourselves with. In yoga, it's called Sangha, the company that we keep. When looking at mind-body harmony, one of the main things to be aware of is, are the people you're associating with bringing the best of you out, making you more passionate about life, allowing you to tap deeper into your resources, your skills, your abilities, your creativity, or are they depleting your energy? And it's not just the people that are part of the company that you keep, it's also the environments make a part of the company that you keep. Is nature a big part of your environment? And if so, if you need to make these changes, if you spend lots of time in nature, you'll find that the company of good people that are uplifting to you of natural surroundings, of healthy, nutritious foods, and all of the inputs that your environment brings into your life will actually facilitate and enhance wellness. The difference between wellness and illness, as my teacher often reminded me, is wellness begins with the first two letters, W and E, we. Illness begins with the letter I integrate people into your life, embrace the we, and the mind-body harmony will follow.